Okay, so we've got a question here. x squared plus 7x plus 2 is congruent with 0 mod 100. And we need to find all the solutions. So we need to find all the integer solutions to be even more precise. So how are we going to go about that? Well, modulus 100 is our first thing we need to be careful of here. We can't just go straight in, organs blazing with modulus 100 and calculate and see what you get. We need to break this up into prime factorization. So we know 100 is 2 squared plus 5 squared. That's our prime factors. So now what we need to do is we need to work in modulus 2 or modulus 5 and go through both. And then because they're squared, we then need to use something called Hensel's lemma, where we lift the powers and then we're going to combine the two of the two different prime factors and use something called the Chinese remainder theorem to get our results. OK, so the easiest place to start is going to be with this two. So let's first of all, let's start off modulus two. OK, x squared plus 7x plus 2. We can rewrite this modulus 2. Keep the x squared. We can keep subtracting uh, 2s uh, multiplied by some sort of integer. So that will then just give us x. So that's fully legit. And then this 2, we can disappear uh, this from our equation because 2 modulus 2 is the same as 0. And then that's congruent with 0 mod 2. Okay, now we need to find our solutions for this. So what can we plug in here? Well, it's either zero or one or both or none. Well, if we plug in a zero, zero plus zero is zero. That's going to be zero modulus two. So let's put a little line here. Modulus two, we've got zero as a solution. And don't forget we want all the solutions. So we need to add on two times n. So 2 would be a solution. So 2 squared is 4 plus 2, 6. That is also correct. And so on and so on for all n. So n is in the integers. And now what about 1? 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 is congruent with 0 mod 2. So 1 is also a correct answer. OK. Now we need to do something called Hensel's Lemma. Now the formula for this is, is as follows. So I'm going to call it H subscript I. So there's more than one uh, input for this. So that equals F of X I. Then we divide that by M, which is our modulus. And then we're going to add that our derivative of x i multiplied by our n and that's going to give us our solutions using Hensel's lemma. Now the n's we could give that a subscript i as well because we're going to use that for this one and this one. So this is the first one this could be the second one so i is one i is two. Okay so we're going to work out some cal calculations first so we need f of x one so let's look at x1 and let that equal 0 plus 2n. So for this calculation here, we use the least residues. So i.e. we don't need the 2n. So now we can take this 2n off for now, just for these calculations. Then we need our m. m is our modulus. Well, modulus is 2. We need our derivative of f with respect to xi. So the derivative of this, so I'm going to write this here now. So f prime of x, so we've got 2x plus 7. This will disappear. So that's 2x plus 7. And then our n is our number here. So we don't know what n is. We need to find our n. Okay. Now let's work out what f of x1 is. So f of x1, plug in 0, 0 plus 0 plus 2. So that's 2. Now we need our derivative at 0. 
Well, our derivative is 2x plus 7, so our derivative is 7. So the derivative of x1 equals 7. Okay, now we're free now to go straight in and try and calculate it. So our h1 is f of x1, which is 2, divided by the modulus, which is 2. We're going to now multiply n by the derivative at this, at this value. So now we've got 7n. And then what we do is we solve this for modulus 2. So 0. So we need to find some number that's congruent with 0, modulus 2. So that's going to now leave us with 1 plus 7n is congruent with 0, mod 2. So what value of n is appropriate here? Well, in this one, n can be 1. So here we'll have our n equals 1. So if n is 0, that's no good. If n is 1, that's good. OK. Now let's work out our value for when we've got x1 is 0. So now we've got 0 plus 2n. So now I'm going to put my first solution as an integer k. So k subscript 1 equals 0 plus 2 times n. So then that gives us our n is 1. So that then gives us k1 equals 2. So that's our first solution modulo 4. So therefore we need to add on that 4n. OK. K1 equals 2 plus 4n. OK, now let's try our x2. Let's just call these x1, and that's x2. So x2 equals 1 plus 2n. So remember, we don't need the 2n. We want the least residue, so that's 1. Our m is still 2, because we're still in modulo 2. Our value now at f of x2 we need to plug in our 1 in here. So 1 squared is 1, plus 7 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Our derivative at 1, our derivative is 2x plus 7, so that's going to give us 9. OK, so now we can go in now and try and calculate h2. So h2 is f of x 2, which is 10. Divide that by the modulus, which is 2. And then this multiply by n. And then set that to congruence of 0, mod 2. So now we've got 5 plus 9n. These congruent with 0, mod 2. So here, n is 0, that's not going to work. If n is 1, we've got 5 plus 9 is 14. That's going to be congruent with 0 mod 2. So our, here our n is 1. So for this one, our n equals 1. OK, now our value here for x2 is 1 plus 2n. So therefore, I'm going to sign my variable k2 as 1 plus 2n, which is going to lead me to 1 plus 2 times 1, which equals 3. So as we're working in modulo 4 for this solution, k2 equals 3 plus 4n. So if you put in this modulo 2, uh, sorry, modulo 4, we'll get 2 or 3 is correct solution. So let's just try the 2 for a start. 2 squared is 4, 7 2 is 14, that's 18 and 20. 20 modulo 4 is correct. And try 3, that's 9. Well, 7 3 is 21, that's 30. 32 modulo 4, that's correct. So we know these are valid. OK, so I'm going to rub these off the board now, and now I'm going to try modulo 5. OK, so now modulo 5. So let's write this now for modulo 5. So we can bring this down by 5. So now we'll have x squared plus 2x plus 2. We can group with 0 mod Five. Now we can just try and plug in some values for x here, but I'm going to go through uh, the routine that we normally try. Check out the videos uh, in the link below. You'll see how this is done on a lot of uh, examples. So x squared plus 2x. 
So if you find the square, because this won't factor, so we can write this as x plus 1 squared. So that was then going to give me my x squared plus 2x. But now I've gained a 1, which I don't want. So I subtract 1 and add 2, group is 0, mod 5. Still legit in mod 5 terminology. Okay, plus 2 and minus 1, that's going to give me a plus 1. So now I've got x plus 1 squared plus 1 is congruent with 0 mod 5. Okay, let's bring this integer on the other side and then maybe we can take the square root. So x plus 1 squared is congruent with minus 1 mod 5. Now, minus 1, obviously we're not going to take the square root of that. We're going to be left with i. But what we can see is here that minus 1 is also 4 mod 5. So that's the same congruent. So we can change this now for positive 4. OK, now let's just take the square root on both sides. So we're left with x plus 1 is congruent with 2 mod 5. That's all legit. Subtract 1 of both. So x is congruent now with 1 mod 5. Now here, we made a simple mistake here. We should have put plus or minus 2. So let's just go back one step and let's just get this correct. So x plus 1 is congruent with plus or minus 2 mod 5. Because minus 2 squared will still give us 4. So now we've got two solutions x is congruent with plus 2 minus 1 mod 5 and x is congruent with minus 2 minus 1 mod 5. Okay, so now we've got our solutions here now. So I'm going to call these x2 and x3 just like we did here. So mod 5, we've got x3 equals plus 2 minus 1, so that's 1 plus 5n, and then x4 equals minus 2 minus 1. So we've got to be careful here. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3, but we don't want minus 3 as the least residue. We want the positive 2. So that's 2 plus 5n. OK, so now we've got this. We can go on to our box here with Hensel's lemma and our little formula, and let's see if we can calculate our integers for mod 25. Okay. Okay, so now let's use Hensel's lemma to find our solutions modulus 25. So we've got our x3 and our x4. Let's start off with x3 first. So as we did before, we want f of x3. So x3 equals 1. We don't need to worry about the 5n at the moment. So f of x3 so 1 into here, that gives us 1 plus 7 plus 2, that gives us 10. OK, our modulus now is different. Our modulus now is in the modulus of 5, so m equals 5. Our derivative at this x3, 2x plus 7, when x is 1, that's going to give us 9. So f prime of x3 equals 9. OK, now we're going to plug that in here and find our n with the congruence as we did before. So now let's look for h3 equals f of x3, which is 10, over the modulus, which is 5, add the derivative times n, and that's congruent with 0 mod 5. OK, let's see if we can solve for n. Okay, what value of n can we plug in here? Well, two nines are 18, plus 2 is 20. 20 is congruent with 0 mod 5. So here we've got n equals 2. OK, so now we're ready to calculate k3. So that's our third solu uh, solution here that we're going to plug into our Chinese remainder theorem. So k3 equals 2 plus 9n. So we've got here n is 2. So we used 1, so 1 plus 5n, 1 plus 5n, so that's our n is 2, and that equals 11. 
So now we've got 11 plus 25n as our k3. Okay, now let's try x4. So that equals 2, that's our least residue. Our modulus is still 5. Just put a little line under this. f of x4. So plug 2 into this. 2 squared is 4, plus 14 is 18, and 2 is 20. Now we need the derivative at 2. So f prime at x4 equals, well here we've got 2x plus 7. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 7 is 11. Okay, now we'll go straight in there to try and find h4. That equals 20 over 5 plus 11n. And we set that congruent to 0 modulus 5. Okay, let's simplify this up and see where it takes us. 4 plus 11n is congruent with 0 mod 5. Solving for n, what value of n can we plug in here? Well, if n is 1, 4 plus 15, that is congruent with 0 mod 5. So let n equal 1. So now we've got our x4 equals 2 plus 5n. So therefore, k4 equals 2 plus 5n, which equals 2 plus 5 times 1, which equals 7. So therefore, k4 equals 7 plus 25n. Let's just write that a little bit neater. 25n. Okay. Now I've got my four solutions here, which I can now plug into the Chinese remainder theorem and combine them in a way that's going to give us my solution to modulo 100. OK, so I'm going to rub this off the board. OK, so now I need to use my Chinese remainder theorem. So now I'm going to list these K solutions as a letter A, B or C or D. So this one I'm going to use as A, this one as B. This one is C, and this one is D. And now I need to combine. I need A with C. I need A with D. I need B with C, and B with D. That way then I'm combining the four combinations of each modulus together to give me my solutions for mod 100. Okay, and then when we've got that, we've achieved our goal. So let's combine A with C first. So first of all, let's do A and C. Well, my K3 says 11 plus 25A, N. So I'm going to go 11 plus 25N. Now that solution, to be valid mod 100, must also work in here. So my N here I don't need, but I need my 2 here, my least residue. So that is congruent with 2. And as that's plus 4n, so that's modulus 4, so we need to find a solution for our n here, modulo 4. And then we're going to plug that into back into this k3. So now we've got 25n, that can stay. And then we subtract 11 from both sides, we get minus 2 mod 4. OK, we can rewrite this minus 9 in modulo 4 language, to positive 3. So 25n is congruent to 3 mod 4. So that's still working for the n we're going to start out with here. So now we need to find a solution for n. So 0 won't work, 1 won't work, 2 is not going to work, so 3. So n is 3. So n equals 3 plus 4 and then I won't use n because I've already got it here. I'm going to choose a different variable. We can use t. t will be fine. OK, so now I can plug that into here. So we've got k3 equals 11 plus 25n. Well, n is 3 plus 4t. 
So now we can just try and solve this now for t. So we've got 11 plus 25 times 3 is 75. 25 times 4 gives us 100. And that's multiplied by t. So now we've got 86 plus 100t. So that's going to be our first solution. So I can call that, uh, let's call that y1. And we can call that 86 plus 100t. That's my solution for AC. So 86 plus 100t. That's one solution. OK, let's take this off the board and try A combined with D. So that's 7 plus 25N. So A, D, we've got 7 plus 25N. And then we've got here 2 again. So we're going to use that 2. So this time this is congruent with 2 modulo 4. So different value for our 7. Let's try what happens, see what happens here. So 25n is now congruent. Subtract 7 from both sides. That gives us minus 5 mod 4. Now minus 5 mod 4 we know is equivalent to 3. So 25n is congruent with 3 mod 4. Okay, now we need a value for n. So 0 won't work, 1 won't work. So it looks like 3 again. So here we've got our n equals 3. OK, let's plug that in to our equation here. Not to forget to write our 4, sorry, 4t. OK, so back into our k4. So we've now got 7 plus 25 times n, which is 3 plus 4t. That's our K4. And then that, we need to solve that. So 7 plus 25 times 3, that's 7 plus 75 plus 100T. So then we've got 82 plus 100T. OK, so that becomes our Y2. So let's put that in here. 82 plus 100T. So that's our second integer solution. Right, now let's start using B with C and D. B with C. So now we've got 11 plus 25N. And then we want our least integer for B, which is 3. And that's mod 4. OK, let's plug that in. Let's see what we get. So 11 plus 25n, so that's only going to give us 25n is congruent. Subtract 11 from both sides. That's minus 8 mod 4. So that's going to give us 25n is congruent with 0 mod 4. That's pretty straightforward to see. So now we know our n here. Our n is 0. So n equals 0 plus 4t. OK. Let's plug that back into our K3. So we've now got 11 plus 25 times this N here, which is 0 plus 4T. OK, now we've got 11 plus 0 plus 100T. So we can see straight away here now our third solution is going to be 11. So Y3 equals 11 plus 100 T. OK, now our last one now, plug into K4, 7 plus 25 N is congruent. Now with D, we want our B, so it's congruent with 3 mod 4. So 25N is congruent with minus 4 mod 4. So 25N is congruent with 0 mod 4. Very similar to the last example. So that's congruent with 0. So now our N we can see is 0. And that's plus 4T. 
Okay, plug that back in here. So now we've got 7 plus 25 times 0 plus 40. So that's our n plugged into here. So that's going to give us 7 plus 0 plus 100t. So now we know that now our last solution, y of 4 equals 7 plus 100t. And just to be correct in our terminology, we're just going to state that t is in the integers. Okay, so that's now given us our integer solutions and it's all of our integer solutions for this question here. 86 plus 100t, 82 plus 100t, 11 plus 100t and 7 plus 100t. Now just as a little checkpoint, what you can do is you can add the largest and the smallest together, 86 plus 7 give you 93, and the middle two, 82 plus 11, also give you 93. Now this is something you can look into a bit later when you look into residue classes. So that's a little checkpoint for you to check. I'll show you another video of how that becomes about. Okay, thank you.